So this is uh, one of the main uh, entry points uh, to Unravel product. Uh, when you kind of log on to Unravel, uh, you can get to see all the applications which are running in the cluster. Uh, so it's easy to for you to go and select any time frame. Uh, so you could come back and say, hey, show me all the applications uh, which are running in the cluster uh, between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. on a specific day, right? And just through a few clicks, you can look at all the applications. In this cluster, I'm primarily running like uh, uh, Spark applications, but we support all the different frameworks which are running on your Cloudera stack. Uh, that could be like MapReduce, native MapReduce, or it could be Hive on MapReduce. Uh, we also support uh, frameworks like Pig and Cascading. And uh, recently we've added support for Impala and Kafka as well. Uh, and within Spark, we support like both Spark and Spark SQL. So this kind of gives you a quick way to slice and dice. You can come and look at all the applications run by a particular tenant. You can also look at it from a, a specific queue perspective. So it's a kind of gives you a quick, easy interface to search the application that's of most interest. And this is what we kind of call the self-serve interface. Uh, like many times your end users are submitting these queries using a CLI or, or end user tool, and there's no easy way for them to come in and take a look at it, right? You could go to a Cloudera manager, uh, but it's got all of these capabilities around the system side of things but the end user is really concerned with his or her application. And with Unravel, we kind of make it easier for the end user to just come in and look at their application uh, that they are most interested in. Let's search for, uh, let's, let's role play. Let's kind of figure out that I'm a developer and I'm trying to really optimize uh, an, a Spark application, which I wrote. And uh, I know that this application uh, completed in 36 minutes, uh, but I know my business user wants this application uh, to run much faster, right? Uh, they have like an SLA to complete this uh, within 10 minutes. And I'm really scratching my head. I'm trying to figure out why did this application take 36 minutes? And what is that I can do to really make this application much faster? So with Unravel, I was quickly able to find that Spark application. As you see, I was able to sort uh, it via the duration. I was able to find my Spark application, which took 36 minutes. So I was able to kind of see this application. One of the first things uh, I could do is like, uh, I could also check with my operator, hey, I ran this Spark application a few days back. Uh, it took much longer. Can you help me what's going on? And uh, many times uh, the operator would like to see what is really happening from a Cloudera manager perspective, because there could be a lot of systemic issues which are causing these applications to fail or not perform correctly. Uh, there could be like high CPU utilization in the cluster. Uh, so you could come in and look at like, uh, the Cloudera Manager interface to really kind of understand what happened on the 10th, right? How much CPU was being used in the cluster? And clearly it says that like uh, it had enough resources in the cluster. It was not bottleneck from that perspective. Uh, you also want, want to kind of look at the, the network statistics, right? Many times network becomes the bottleneck and you want to understand what happened from a network perspective at that time. And the Cloudera Manager is a great tool to help you kind of look at that from a systems perspective. You really want to understand does the cluster have the right resources from a CPU or a memory and uh, a CPU and a memory and a network perspective? The next thing you want to know is, uh, was a Spark service running at that time, right? So with, uh, with Cloudera Manager, just through a few clicks, you can come in and you can look at like, okay, how did the Spark, how's my Spark uh, demons doing? Are they up or down? I can actually uh, scroll in, I can go to that time on 810 when I really ran the Spark application. And I can understand, I can just look at a few charts here. I can see, hey, my Spark service was up at that time. I can also look at like all the instances and see what was going on on those instances. I can also understand from the configuration perspective, what are the key configurations associated with that? Uh, many times you also want to see your overall host view and see if all your hosts are up, right? Uh, because of, if, if a couple of your hosts in a cluster are down, uh, clearly uh, your jobs may not run optimally. So Cloudera Manager gives you a great entry point from a systems perspective, as we say, at the bottoms of view of what happened from the infrastructure perspective, where there really gaps that could affect your cluster. You could also come here and also start looking at uh, that search for that application from the YARN perspective, that's the application view. You can search for that application, uh, which took like 30 minutes in that case, and I'm able to find that application. So it kind of gives you the high level KPI that this application ran on, on, on so-and-so date on 810, 
and it took 36 minutes, right? Very similar to what you saw in the first interface. But at this point, like, uh, uh, you're left to yourself, right? Because a Cloudera manager was really focused on the system side of things. It said, hey, you ran this application on the cluster. We kind of found you that application. And then from here, if you click on it, uh, you end up going to the Yarn Web UI. And that kind of gives you some history. And then from here, you can start going to the Spark Web UI. And you keep going on that path. Right. And as I kind of showed you that slide, once you go to the Spark Web UI, uh, you start kind of like chasing on different paths and you're trying to really digest that information and eventually get to the logs, trying to figure out what's going on. So with Unravel, we've taken a very different approach. So when you click on that application, uh, you get to see everything that is, which is related to the application in one view. And uh, this is really important for us because we are trying to tie all the things related to the application very holistically in one picture, right? So as an end user, you may not have all the details of how that Spark job ran in the cluster, but with Unravel, we're trying to abstract it, give you the key pieces of information that's most relevant. So here, if you see, like if I'm the end user, I have a question, why did this application take 36 minutes? What is that I can do to improve the performance? And you can quickly see that the key KPIs are really nicely laid out. I can also see that uh, there were close to like 18,000 tasks associated with that. Uh, I can also see how uh, it ran in the cluster from a attempts perspective, from an overall container perspective, uh, how much of memory was being used. I can also really understand the fine grained resource usage, right? Uh, as Spark is a very is a very kind of memory intensive framework. You want to understand uh, at the container level how much of resources were being used, and uh, this is a piece of technology that Unravel has created, where we really understand the context of these applications running in the containers and what is really happening in the container. So we feed that information to Unravel, and you get to see in a very fine level what is going on at the container level. So a lot of times you want to kind of look at like heap size issues and other things, and that can quickly become evident uh, looking at uh, the Unravel Web UI. At the high level, we also kind of show you what are the different stages uh, which, are, which are generated or transpired as part of the Spark application. Uh, we have a very simple Gantt chart view which tells you where time was being spent. So if you're really trying to optimize your Spark application, it's important to figure out which stage to optimize. You can look at all of the data and that's, that is available in various views, but the key here is MTTR. Quickly kind of get in and resolve the problem and with Unravel, we always kept in mind as we build this product. So here you can see how time is being spent. And in fact, if I click on that particular stage, it takes me to the next level of detail, right? So notice how I started at the highest level of abstraction, which is my application. And then slowly but surely, I'm kind of drilling down into the individual components. And within the component, I can really understand how the task really ran, right? So I can give you a timeline view, which says how the uh, task got distributed, how much time did each of the tasks take, how much, uh, uh, how much of uh, data it crunched, and uh, so on and so forth, right? And then all the way to how these particular tasks map to the underlying host. So starting from the core application and drilling down to the individual components. And these kind of visuals are very important because if you have things like SKU, uh, the visuals which you have built in Unravel can help you spot those very, very easily because you'll typically find like one task uh, which is taking much longer than others and it's crunching a lot more data than others, right? So just looking at these visuals gives you a lot of insights, uh, which is very difficult to glean otherwise, right? You have to kind of like, put your systems and processes in place and, and your knowledge and a lot of best practices to get this. But we have tried to encompass all of this in a product, in our product. But the key value prop of Unravel is above and beyond, right? So as I mentioned, we kind of not only present you with all of these visuals, which is very, very important, but we go beyond this, where we try to do a lot of the analytics behind the scenes, where we are looking at this metrics and logs and configuration data. And then kind of telling you, look, we understood the context of this application. We also understand what other applications are running in the cluster. We also understand, we also know how much of resources and uh, capabilities are available in the cluster. Based on all of that, we do our analytics and kind of tell you, hey, there is a lot of things you can do to improve the performance. And we point that out to you. We kind of say, okay, these are some of the current configuration parameters 
but you could do much better by changing these configuration parameters. And the reality is for all of these big data systems, there are so many configuration norms that it's impossible for an end user, for a business analyst to be really on top of all of this, right? And uh, many times they just use it, they end up using like default configuration parameters and that's not the right thing to do. So with Unravel, we've kind of, since we're understanding all of these applications which are running in real time, we can provide very objectively what your recommended configuration parameters are, right? So in this case, we're kind of looking at some of the key Spark parameters and we are suggesting concrete values that you can use uh, as part of your next run to improve the performance. And we also kind of give you the reasoning behind it, right? So here's the science behind it where we've understood uh, many of these uh, configuration parameters. We've looked at how the containers are being used or underutilized. And many times we also give you recommendations above and beyond just configuration parameters where we tell you things like uh, if you can cache a certain RDD, right? So with Spark applications, you can get significant more performance by caching certain RDDs. So we can point out which RDDs you can cache and also help you map to the line of code where you can go and add the cache statement. So in this case, I took this recommendation uh, which Unravel provided and then reran that same Spark application which now ran in seven minutes, 12 seconds, right? So you notice a significant performance improvement from 30 minutes to seven minutes, 12 seconds. And as you noticed, it just took a few clicks, right? So if you are like an end business, you, uh, business analyst who's got access to Unravel, you can come and take a look at it, see what Unravel is saying and start collaborating with the ops team and say, you know what, hey ops, take a look at this. Unravel is saying, I need to kind of change these configuration parameters and you can have both the ops team and the development team take a look at this and within a few minutes, everybody can agree that these are good configuration parameters that you can change. You can like rerun your Spark application with these changes and you can get a significant performance improvement, right? So going back to the poll, for many of you as you're kind of struggling with performance and trying to improve the speed or trying to improve the speed of these applications, Unravel provides a quick path to help you get unblocked and solve a lot of these issues. So in addition to uh, looking at application speed ups, uh, there's a lot of other value add which you provide at Unravel. So let me kind of quickly go through a few other key capabilities. We will not have time to cover all of that. But uh, another key feature which we do in Unravel is help you identify or chase down errors. Because many times it's just not application speed up. It could be uh, you wrote a Spark application and uh, it failed, right? And like uh, today there's a lot of back and forth really trying to figure out where the error is because you have to go and grep on the line of code in a particular executor and the executor could be running on node number like 200 or something like that, right? So go and fetching those logs and trying to understand that becomes really painful. painful. Uh, with Unravel, uh, just a few click, you can come here and we can tell you exactly where the error is and what the problem is, right? So here we are kind of giving you some insights on what is going on. And if you click on the error views, we're pointing out exactly what those problems are, right? So we're kind of telling you these warnings and we give you these fatal exception messages and we're extracting that stack trace uh, from the appropriate law, right? So here there are some permission issues which are causing uh, that particular Spark application to fail. So as you notice, again, just through a few clicks, Unravel kind of helps you get to the root cause of the problem. So quickly come in, like understand those issues, fix those issues and move on. So in addition to uh, looking at ad hoc applications, uh, the other thing which we do very effectively is looking at your data pipelines, right? Uh, because many times it's just not your individual Hive application or Spark application or Impala query. You also want to look at your end-to-end -end data pipelines. And uh, that is very important because uh, it's, it's a combination of your Hive jobs or Spark jobs. And that view is very difficult to get to today. Right? You could go to a Yarn web UI or you could go to another console but they'll kind of tell you your individual map reduce components or Spark components. But what you're really trying to get to is tell me my entire workflow. And that workflow is really composed of a bunch of Hive jobs and Spark job and map reduce jobs. And you want to look at the entirety of that. And that is a very powerful view which we've built in Unravel where again, you can come in and say, this is my data pipeline prod model gen two, which runs daily. And I really want to understand how the performance has changed over a period of time. So with Unravel, with just a few clicks, 
you can do a delta of the performance between your good run and a bad run and within the bad run again you can figure out like which component is the long pull and you want to spend your time and effort really optimizing uh, the component which took the most amount of time so this is the other sort of view in terms of the uh, the applications where in addition to ad hoc we also look at like your repeated running workflows uh, the other component uh, which we have in unravel is helping you sort of bring the operational side of things where we kind of like look at your overall cluster and tell you what is going on right so this is important because if you are the operator you are not just looking at like individual applications you want to look at your cluster holistically and answer questions like what is really happening in the cluster i see a spike in my usage and you could see that in a cloud air manager but you want to answer that from the application perspective you want to come in and say which application took the most amount of time or resources in my cluster and unravel helps you kind of like answer those questions where you can we call it the forensic view where you can really help uh, to figure out which applications were running at the cluster at a particular amount of time and how much resources were being used and armed with this knowledge you could create some uh, policies right where you could come in and say yeah like i'm seeing some users abuse my cluster repeatedly in certain queues and i want to be able to create some policies to fix those right so with unravel we give you we call these as auto actions but basically we give you a mechanism uh, to go and create those policies where you can specify certain things around how much memory is being used how much of uh, other jobs are being are pending and then we could send you appropriate alerts we can send you an email or we can take some actions based on it either move those uh, outlier jobs to a different queue or kill applications so this is just a brief tour in terms of uh, some of our other core capabilities uh, happy to kind of do a deep dive demo for some of you might be interested uh, we can sort of do a deep dive demo of all the other capabilities that are unravel but what i really wanted to highlight is how we are really uh, helping complement a tool like cloud air manager which is coming from the system side of things and we are taking an app first approach an application first approach where we are kind of telling you how you can look at your applications holistically and then trying to root cause into the performance issue or error issues and then help uh, go and fix those